Hey guys, Jordan here. Today we're checking out Asus's latest and greatest AIO. This is the Ryu 4 SLC 360 RGB. Asus are going for the curved screen option on this one. We're seeing a lot of AIOs bringing that kind of style out now. And obviously Asus are following that as well. There's the screen in its own box. We'll cover that of course in a minute. We've got our mounting options on the right hand side. Oh, I like the way they've laid that out. That looks very cool. So we've got our back plate. This is obviously going to be for Intel. Now this cooler is going to support Intel 1700 and 1851. There isn't anything prior to that. So it's only going to be the most recent like four years of sockets that it supports for the Intel side. Then for AMD, we have got support for AM4 and AM5 being that's the same spacing. So you can support all of those there. Little part looks like it's going to go onto the hoses as well. Nice little ROG logo on there. And they're presuming underneath we're going to have all the extra bits. So yeah, we've got radiator screws, Intel, plastic collars, and then we've also got some documentation. And then lastly, some ROG stickers. So we've got the radiator and then the pump in this kind of conjoined box. So here's the main bulk of the actual get itself. That's a 32 mil radiator there with 25 mil thick fans. So obviously the thicker the radiator, the more heat dissipation you've got going there. As you can see, the hoses on this one are a lot shorter in length than most AIOs. These are 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. And obviously they come out of the radiator in the middle, as you can see, rather than at one of the ends. As you can see, it's also thicker than a standard 360 mil AIO, but you'll need the width of a 420 mil AIO in your roof to be able to install it. So that's obviously going to be one of the limiting factors on what cases you can put it in as well. So hopefully it'll fit in the test system. Um, we might have to get a little bit creative with the testing for this one, but um, yeah, we'll talk more about that in the conclusion as well. Obviously our fan cables here, they're all pre-installed. Coming out the end here, we've got the five volt three pin addressable RGB, and also a single four pin for PWM. These are all daisy chains as well, so just one header for each, which is quite nice. There's our pump block. We've got a copper cold plate. That's got a circular microfin layout. Looks like we've got a combo bracket on there as well to do AMD and Intel as well, so you don't have to swap them over. We didn't notice any others in the box either, so it looks like it's gonna be both going on to this one. Then on the side, we've got ROG. This is like a fabric for those who dare. And then obviously this is where our main screen will be attached to. We've also got a four pin there for your PWM for the pump. And we'll just move that to the side so we can have a close look at the screen. So here's the screen itself. There's that curve that I mentioned. I've got a screen protector on here at the moment. It is a nice and matte for the screen underneath that. So you're not gonna have any reflections going off of it. Leave that back on for now. On each side, we've also got a couple of pills. That gives a nice kind of see-through, reminds me of the old Game Boys, IV for the four, and there's some coordinates on there as well. Underneath, we've just got a plain matte side, and then we've also got that big magnet that will clip onto the other side of the pump. In terms of the actual display, this is a 6.67 inch AMOLED display, resolution of 2560 by 1080p, so it should be really nice and vibrant. Of course, you could do GIFs, images, your metric, CPU temperature, graphics card temperature, and things like that. That terminates with the USB 2 header, so just a simple motherboard connection. And let's have a look at how this will actually install. So this will go just down in like so. Magnets in, really nice and solid. It's quite solid, actually. And there's also a little bit of movement on the pump as well. So if you're needing to clear some memory modules, you can just slide it along. Or if you just like a personal preference, you might like it a little bit further along. Really liking that so far. Other little things to mention, you've got a six year warranty with this. I believe the last kind of curved display cooler we looked at was the Trix, and that had a six year warranty on the AIO, but only two on the screen. So it's nice that you've got six as a whole unit on this one. At the current retail, this is 389 pounds. So it is rather on the expensive end. Currently find it for around 370, but we'll of course talk more about pricing and things in the conclusion, especially because we need to look at the screen and things really to see if it's obviously justifiable. So I'll now get this into my test system. We'll go over the thermal performance, show you how it all sets up in Armory Crate, show you what the screen can do and things like that as well. And I'll give you my overall thoughts. Okay, so going into the Asus software here, we've got our homepage. We've got some different stats and things about your system. Then we go to screen settings. Here we're gonna have all of our different options. So you can either have this as one kind of cohesive screen or you can split it into different sections. You've also got different info places and panes that you can change around to your own preferences. So you can say chassis fan, apply that, then that will pop up on our screen. There isn't any presets for the split screen at the moment, unfortunately, so it's just a case of kind of adding your own. So if we go to the desktop, I've got a little GIF that I've saved that you could pick. Let's just try to scale this. And then you could put that onto one side once it's uploaded and apply. 
will get a little bit pixelated if you don't choose high quality ones. So, so certainly something to recommend there. Then you can just add another one for this section. So if you do want to have a split, it's obviously a stupid gif on my face. Um, but just for an example, you can just put that on to both sides like so. The one zone, we've got some presets down the bottom. And I've also got some info on there that I've picked as well, but you can just easily bin these off if you don't want those. And you can also go and change them as well. So you've got your text color, you can pick a color around the wheel for your kind of title. And then for the content, that's just the number underneath it. So you can see you can change the different colors there again. So you can change the color for whatever you like there. I suppose a lot of people will have different colors for the graphics card and a different color for the CPU, for example. And you can just click OK, or again, you can just get rid of them completely. So let me go through the other presets just so you can see them. This one's pretty cool, quite a 3D effect, like you see on the billboards that have those kind of 3D effects, it's very similar. And then this just goes on to the GIFs that I've uploaded. So as you can see, at the moment, we've got about five or so presets. I think this one's my favorite one that it will go through. You can also cycle, loop, or just shuffle. So you can just shuffle through the different ones here. And then obviously add, if you want to add your own GIF, but that will obviously need to be scaled. Car one in, for example, as I mentioned, the quality is pretty low, so it does show a little bit pixelated on the screen. But you can also record your own screen as well. If you want to add in something, you might want to maybe record a clip from a YouTube video, you can just record that in and then add that. Nice little quick way to do it. But yeah, a little lacking, I think, at the moment. It would be nice to have some different preset options. It's certainly better than nothing, but hopefully we'll see some more added in the future. On to the conclusion, as you can see, once installed, it's a huge showpiece. That huge curved AMOLED screen and the subtle lighting gives it a really premium look. In terms of installation, fitment's a big thing to make note of with this cooler. Normally, I test AOs in my Fantex Etho 2 Pro, but being a dual system case, it just isn't enough space in the top for the radiator. The Royo center mounted tubing also means you'll need quite a big gap at the top of it to fit comfortably. Otherwise, you're going to be putting pressure on the hoses, which they are server grade, but obviously isn't ideal. Thankfully, the fittings swivel on both ends, which helps with the routing, but it's very snug and you'll want at least 70 to 80 mil clearance above your motherboard to fit it properly. Anything less and you're just going to be fighting the tubing. It's also going to be wider than your average 360 mil, so just double check your case compatibility. Technically, it will mount as a 360 in length, but the depth of the radiator is the size of a 420, so something else to mention. I installed it in the Corsair Frame 5000D, as you can see here. Corsair include a bracket that allows you to use a 360mm or 420mm AO in the roof. It's kind of shaped like an L, so you basically adjust it to the size you want to use. So 360, a bit further back for 420. But being that this is a extra depth on this AO, that means that the radiator continues past that point for where the mounting is. So you're going to need extra long screws, well not extra long, but twice the length probably to then bridge that gap that's going to be where the L bracket sits on top. I had to use some from another Corsair LEO, but it is something that's worth mentioning if you do plan to use these in combination together because it can be a little bit of a pain as you can fit the Asus ones in one side, but not the other because that extra gap. Something you could easily sort with an angle grinder or a Dremel if you'd like to, but if you want to keep everything default, then you're going to need some extra length screws, which is obviously a little bit of a downside. In terms of the cables, I also flipped the fans around since the cables were coming out here. It was a little bit messy because they sit quite far front to the case. Um, so I flipped those to the back. They're now just going out the back of the cable management port for the EPS cables. I think they should default it to that as well. It's uh, much less noticeable. In terms of the RGB, that's going to be with a standard 5 volt addressable 3 pin. So that will be down to what your motherboard uses. I'm using Asus and obviously you get all the different things in Armory Crate, but your software may vary in the effects you can do depending on what motherboard you're using. Now, as for the display, easily the best screen I've ever seen on an AOO. The curved AMOLED is bright, sharp and surprisingly non-reflective with the matte coating that's on there. It generally looks like a mini OLED monitor just sitting inside your case. The Asus Info Hub software works really well and handles the controls and all the monitoring as you saw. And while it works quite well, it's pretty limited in terms of the customization. There aren't that many preset layouts. And if you'd like to upload your own GIFs, then they really need to be high quality. Otherwise, you're going to spot the pixelation instantly. Hopefully, Asus do add a few more options in future updates because the display itself was fantastic and certainly deserves more flexibility. 
And let's get on to performance in terms of my thermal testing with my usual 12900K and fixed 1500 RPM fans. It came in at 59.4, which would make it the third coolest air that I've tested. Now, a quick note about the testing. I usually mount at the front of the case since that's where my test system supports up to 420 mil rads. Now, the reason I started doing that was because the first cooler I tested was 420 and it wouldn't fit in the roof. So I had to put it in the front and to keep things consistent. I've tested everything the same since. That said, I don't recommend front mounting long term. It's just a brief thing I do obviously to test these coolers, especially as some of them can only fit in the front. Now with the Royo, it's got the shorter tubing and central mounting, so it's designed for roof installation. So for this one, I had to swap to the 5000D as obviously it wouldn't fit in the other case anyway. And the downside being that we can't compare those fairly because obviously we're using a different case. So the test setup has changed. Also why I'm not gonna call this one a review because I wouldn't feel right uh, naming it as such because we've got different test setup conditions. Even that though, the 59 degrees, I think is an excellent result, especially with the fans that are in this case, running at a you know, moderate 1500 RPM as well. It would sit near the top of the chart if it was on the same test bench. The noise levels are fine around 1500 RPM. They do ramp up quickly beyond that. Also got a quick little demo to show you. So I'm currently, let's bring them up to 1500 RPM to begin with. Not too bad. This is just the, the cooler itself as well. We're not including any of the case fans here. 2000 RPM. It does get loud pretty quickly. And if we max it. As you can hear, it gets loud very quickly. Now the interesting part is the temperature barely changes between 1500, 2000 and 2650 it's only about half a degree difference so that kind of consistency is pretty rare basically means you're not going to lose the performance by running it quietly 1500 rpm i think is the ideal kind of scenario unless you're doing a lot of cpu intensive work blender rendering that kind of thing where you may have it running at a higher rpm for a brief amount of time 1500 rpm i think is going to be quite comfortable a couple of considerations you may need to take into account if you're using a hotter chip for example 14900k you may need to adjust it a little bit but for the 12900k it's been yeah really good even at 1500 rpm now also i want to quickly mention about the trix panorama se360 we previously looked at people may be comparing that one to this that's around 120 pounds cheaper than this at the moment this one's going to come in at 369 at the time of filming that would also be easier to fit in compact cases because you've got the hoses coming out the end of the radiator instead of the middle. That said, the Asus absolutely wins on looks. The Royo's AMOLED is almost half the size of the Trix display again, and the matte finish just makes it look expensive. If you've got the space and budget, then this is certainly the one to show off. So overall, it's a little bit of a paradox. One of the best looking AOs that Asus have made. Strong cooling performance and unmatched display, but it does demand patience and proper planning to install properly. So I'm going to leave this one here. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If there's anything else you'd like to know I haven't covered, obviously please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I've done my best to include everything I can without calling this a review. Obviously we're under different test circumstances, so I think uh, leaving out the review is only fair. Let me know your thoughts. I'd like to uh, hear what you think about this cooler. 369 at the time of filming. Obviously quite expensive, but an absolutely stunning um, cooler to use in the showcase build. I'll also leave the links in the description box below if you want to pick one up. Big thank you to Asia for sending this out for me to look at. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.